today we're going to look at subtracting fractions. We're done with our addition, and now we're going to look at subtracting. Kind of the same sheet that we started with with addition, you have your four columns. You have your problem, picture, work, and answer. For the first problem, it says Karen went along with her father to the jewelry store to buy her mom a diamond necklace. He looked at one weighing one-third of a carat and another weighing one-fourth of a carat. What is the weight difference between the two diamonds? Okay, so first identify what's important. We know that one weighed a third of a carat, the other one weighed a fourth of a carat. What is the weight difference between the two? Well, we know difference tells us that we are subtracting. So let's start with a picture. The first carat was one third. So my picture, I know that one third would be a picture with three boxes and a third would be colored in. They want us to subtract a fourth. Well, you have to think in pictures, how would I show subtraction? Subtraction, we usually cross off to show it's being taken away. But can we take one fourth off of our existing picture? No, because I don't have a fourth. I have a third, but a third and a fourth are different. So I know that I am trying to subtract one fourth. So let's look at our work, what it would look like if we set it up with our numbers. So I started with one third. I need to subtract one fourth. Well, just like addition, the first thing that we need to look at is our denominators. Do they match? and they do not match. That's why we can't subtract a fourth from a third is because the number of pieces are not the same. So the first thing we have to do is get our denominators the same, and this is subtraction. So if you can tell three and four, what number would they share? Well, I know that they share a 12. So I know that my denominator for both is going to be 12. The question is, how do I get there? Well, I know from 3 to 12 is times 4, and whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So 1 times 4 would give me 4. So my equivalent fraction to 1 third is going to be 4 twelfths. At the bottom, how do I get from 4 to 12? Well, that's times 3, and whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 twelfths is equivalent to 1 fourth, but now we have common denominators. They are the same. So let me go back to the picture for just a second. If I took my third, and now we said, okay, 4 twelfths is equivalent, I would need, how do I make this 4 twelfths? Well, I break it up, and they're supposed to be even pieces. 3, 6, 9, and they're not even, but you get the idea. Now we have 4 twelfths. I didn't add any or take any shading away. I just broke it up into smaller pieces, and now there are 4 out of 12. Well, now can I subtract 1 fourth? Well, no, because I don't have 4 pieces, but remember we just made an equivalent. That's the same as 3 twelfths. So can I take away 3 twelfths? Well, yeah, I just count one, two, three twelfths are gone. What do I have left? It looks like I have one twelfth left, and that's what we're going to check and see if we're correct. Okay, so from our work, we found that our common denominator was 12. And I know some of you like to use your e-chart, so this is what it would look like if you did an e-chart, is you just start off with one third, and then it would be two sixths. 3 ninths, and there's your 4 twelfths, and then you would do an e-chart for the bottom one because we're trying to do an e-chart and find that common denominator. And as soon as I see that I have a denominator that's the same, well, those are the fractions that I can use because now they are in the same number of pieces. Okay, so first was the common denominator. 
we're done with that. Next is numerators. What are we doing? We're subtracting, so let's just subtract the numerators. Four minus three is one. Denominator stays the same because the denominator, remember, is how many total pieces in the picture. I also want to check, do I have an improper? Do I need to switch anything? No. Last, can I reduce? Well, in this one, 1 12th is as reduced as we get. So my answer here would be 1 12th. I guess we can do that over here. 1 12th, and what is it? It is the carat weight. So a 12th of a carat, or we should say the difference is, is a 12th of a carat. There you go. Okay, so let's try number two. A recipe called for a low calorie dish called for three-fourths of a cup of skim milk. The cook had only a fourth of a cup. How much more does he need? Okay, so important, three-fourths of a cup of milk is important. The cook had only a fourth of a cup. How much more does he need? Well, that how much more tells us we're subtracting. So I look at a picture. I've got three-fourths. So my picture would be in fourths. And I would need to color in three of those, three-fourths. They want me to subtract one-fourth. Can I subtract one-fourth from three-fourths? So yes, we can because I'm subtracting one out of four, and my picture shows three out of four. All I have to do is exit out to show subtraction, and my answer should be two-fourths. Okay, let's go to our work and see if we can back that up with the numbers. So we started off with three-fourths. They wanted us to subtract a fourth to see how much more he needs. And the first thing we should have done is look at the denominator. Is there a common denominator? Do we have the same? Well, there is a common denominator, so we don't have to do anything to that. So next is our numerators. We're subtracting, so we're just going to take 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Denominator stays the same. And our answer is going to be 2 fourths. But remember, we need to check. Is it improper? Do we need to make it mixed? No. But can it be reduced? Yes. Two-fourths is the same as one-half. So how much more does he need? He needs a half cup more to have enough for his low-calorie dish. Okay, number three, you try it on your own. Pause the video and then come back and check it with me. We'll see how you did. Okay, so you should try this one on your own. I'm just going to erase a little bit so we don't get crowded. Number three says Antoine needed one and three-fourth yards to score a touchdown. He ran for five-eighths yards. How many yards does he need to score a touchdown? So he had a one and three-fourth yards to score, but he ran a little bit more. We're trying to figure out how much more does he need to run to score that touchdown. So he started at one and three-fourth yards. He ran for five-eighths. How many yards does he need to score a touchdown? So yards does he need? We need to subtract to see what's left for him to run. So think picture, one and three-fourths. So I'm going to have one and three-fourths, so just a part of another one. Here's my three colored in, one and three-fourths. And they want us to subtract 5 eighths. Okay, but we don't have eighths in our picture, so we sure can't take 5 out of 8 away when we don't have them to begin with. I want to remind you, though, if you look back over at your whole piece, remember, even though it's whole 
And it, that just means it's completely colored in. So this is completely shaded in. But remember, this originally is broken up into the same amount of parts because this picture over here tells us the other one was in parts of four. That's why it's a fraction that we can put together as one and three fourths is the denominator tells how many pieces each picture is broken up into. So it may be shaded in all the way, but it originally had the four. Okay, so let's look at our work side because we can't take five eighths when we only have pieces of four. So we've got one and three fourths and we're gonna subtract five eighths. Well, now we're looking at a mixed number, one and three fourths. Okay, so let's ignore the whole number for just a minute. Focus on your fractions. The first thing you've gotta do every time is look at that denominator. Is it the same? Is it common? No, you have a four and an eight. Well, I know that four and eight would both share the eight. I know four goes into eight, or I know that if I count by fours, eight is a multiple. So I know that my common denominator is going to be eight. So I don't need to do an E chart if I've already seen that. But I do need to figure out, well, how do I get there? Four times something gives me eight, it's times two. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top, and then I get six eighths. Eight to eight, well, I don't have to do anything because it's already there, so I just need to move my numerator over. And we are going to, uh -oh, not add, we're going to subtract. Okay, so my denominators are now the same. All I have to do is look at my numerators. Six minus five is one. Denominator stays the same. Now don't forget about your whole number that we left over there. We have a one. If we subtract and there's nothing here, it's like it's a zero. So one minus zero is one. So he would still need to run one and one eighth of a yard to get the touchdown. So he would still need one and one eight yards to score. Okay, so let me show you back on the picture. If you backtrack, if we break our picture up into eighths, which means we're just gonna split it down the middle. Now I have eighths. Now can I subtract five eighths? Well, yeah, because we have one, two, three, four, five out of eight out of that picture. And I still have left one whole and one out of eight right here. And that matches our work. Okay. Remember, you don't have to do anything that the video does not have you do. So if you would, you can leave the rest. We will work on this in class tomorrow. You need to make sure that in class you have your subtracting fractions sheet with you so that we can talk about it and get to work and see if, what questions come up.